with our tile set in place and ready to go, we now have the asset that we need to base a tile map on. So similar to with our textures, if we right click on this, we have a context sensitive option. So we can now create a tile map from our tile set. So we can choose this option. Again, this will create a new asset down here. I'm gonna go into this and we can see how this works. So the first thing is the active tile set has been automatically picked from the one that we've created a bit earlier. If you had more than one, you could change that here. And it is taking in some information. Again, the important thing to the right hand side, we can see we've got these undo arrows and the tile width and height has been set to 64 by 64. If we had this by default, it would have been 32 by 32. And like I said, that would then mean that we're selecting incorrect sizes from here when we're trying to paint things. So if we were to come in and select this, we're going to be getting the wrong chunk as we can see. So that's why it was important that we were using the correct tile width and height to begin with for when we select things from here to paint into the world. So now as I select these, you can see that's paint changing the paintbrush and we've got the option here, paint, eraser and fill. So very simple, but you're probably familiar with what these do. And then this white grid is kind of like our canvas. It will be the world that we're painting onto. So the next thing would likely be to change how big we want this to be at the moment. If we were to, for example, grab all of this, place this in, that would essentially be the size of our world. So let's see how this works. We can drag in our tile map, pull this into the world, and that's probably a little bit too small for the player to walk around on. So if we've got some collision over the camera, we'll sort that a little bit later. Uh, what we want to do though is make this bigger. So we can change that with the map width and the map height. So every grid unit here is going to be 64 by 64, as you would expect. And if we drag that along, we can make this much bigger. Now you probably won't want this to be huge, otherwise you have a very big space to fill. In fact, I think something like 60 by 40 might be quite nice here. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller. In my tests, I think I went for 80 by 20. So something wider than it is tall. We're just going to make a very kind of horizontal level. And then we can start at least kind of working out how the system works. So the first thing is I'm going to get the eraser tool and get rid of these. And we want to focus kind of like if you're familiar with Krita or again Photoshop, we have a very flexible layer system here. So layer one is the one we have at the moment. We can add new layers to this. I'm going to work with something quite simple. So I'm going to create a background and a foreground level. So the one on top is actually going to be the foreground. This is the, uh, the frontmost layer. And then we have a background layer. I'm just pressing F2 to rename these and given those a quick name. Now, as a quick example to show what this will look like, uh, I'm gonna get this black color here. So by selecting that, select the fill tool and on the background, just fill that all in black. And then to test we have the right one in front, let's grab a little bit of hill, change this to paint. Uh, and of course, anything that you select is going to be painted here. And we'll just make sure that this paints over the background. So that's pretty much how we're gonna be using this. We now have our background pretty much set and ready to go. So everything behind us is gonna be that uh, black painted color. And then we can start drawing onto the foreground, which would be the bit that the character or the player is going to be interacting with, with our colliding pieces. So a few things, first of all, these have been given collision for a reason. So I'm going to add these as a kind of outline to the level. So ideally what I was thinking is we would have a kind of corner around all of these. And this is to contain the camera in as well. So the camera is only ever going to see this kind of black outline, which is why I want this to be wider because the camera can see quite far horizontally. So we need a good, I think it's something like 16 units was roughly when the camera would start seeing that there was empty space around it. So we'll have like a corner around about here. I'm just pressing Z to rotate this and X will flip it horizontally. So I'm going to rotate that, create one there, create one roughly there, and we can just erase that one and then grab one of these side pieces. Uh, remember, we want the player to be colliding with this stone looking piece here. So again, I'm just gonna flip that and we can just paint that down around here. You can use different pieces if you want. They're all pretty much the same though. So I'm just gonna flip that to reuse it. And this is basically how we're gonna set the level up. So it's just gonna be a lot of flipping things, dragging it. If you make a mistake, then we're going to erase that. You can also come in, shift select, and with the paint tool, as long as you've got the paint tool selected, shift select, we'll copy that. And again, we can flip that and just paste these in. Again, making sure you've got roughly a 16 point distance from the edge here. And you should be fine with the camera not seeing the empty space that we're going to have in the background. Because remember, we're still going to have all of this around it in the background. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit for the artistic style. But the main thing is that you still don't want to see that kind of too obviously that this isn't the entire world. The next thing, so that's kind of the borders done. We can 
shift select this as well and i'm just going to flip that again using z that is that bit done the next thing is we want our hill so this is pretty much just going to be using this i've made that a little bit too short I may need to add a little bit extra height to this we'll see how this goes so we'll paste this down here then we're going to want these to go down to the floor and you can see this does have a little bit of an outline so keep that in mind that these should be going along the floor as long as you want them to go and then this will be joining up with the other pieces making sure that's a middle piece there because of the outline and then like i said this is the bit this is just filler that the player won't see and really the artistic style i've gone for is when we want a new ledge just using a similar kind of setup there we can paste these along and another tip is if we drag select these two to the right and then just drag that along that end piece will always now be kind of dragged to the very end so you can see it just saves a little bit of time there from selecting different pieces over and over we have that flexibility so i can just paste that in uh, it does mean that we need that to go down a bit further get that corner piece and then we can do something like select the fill tool and fill that in there so again you're probably going to want to do something a little bit more creative than i have so i will not keep this running and do the whole thing with commentary so you've got the the base idea though we can drag and select different things to have some kind of interesting looks here like i said rather than just having uh, one constant grass level piece that's how you can kind of fake some foreground and background looks with the uh, the different connections there and then the final thing i'm going to do as well is the area within this kind of binding that i've made i'm going to go back to the background area grab the eraser and just make sure that we take this out uh, because i find that that color does clash a little bit too much with the character outline and it can look a little bit messy a little bit confusing and it's nice to get that nice solid black outline from the character so i'm just going to erase everything here that's the only other thing you'll see me do but the next thing you're going to see is a fade to the final result if you're in the uk a kind of blue peter here's one i made earlier kind of effect and here's one i made earlier so like i said it is very very simple we've uh, i've cleaned the background up I've added a few different layers of platforms had some overlapping thing here to show that you can make them look so they're intersecting uh, all of that is kind of accounted for in the way that the outline's been done here added a platform for us to jump up on i haven't made use of the wooden platform but you can add that in if you wanted to and then just a brick down here for us to play around on as well so that's the final result you can get something very very similar to that if you wanted uh, the main thing like i've said is that when we drag this into the world this is going to account for the uh, what the camera can always see at any point and we're not going to get, be able to get higher or lower and the camera kind of viewpoint or field of view for the vertical side isn't quite as high as the horizontal plane so if we come back into the map now we can start seeing how this is going to work so we're going to drag this into the world we can see that's much bigger i'll zero this out so we can go zero 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 um, and because the pivot point is top left we'll just want to drag this over and we really want this to line up with the player start point so i'm just going to drag this below the player start and we can start getting rid of things like we don't won't need this floor any longer uh, we also won't need the reflection sphere or the fog so we can get rid of a few of the things from the world outliner over here now if we press play as long as that's in line with the player start the player should fall onto those grids and collide so we there have something that we can walk around on we can see there the player's foot is kind of hovering which is why we wanted to get this in nice and early we can hop back to the player quickly bring that capsule component up a little bit more like i said we can make that kind of fake in size and kind of have that inside of the foot a little bit there so that when we are resting it looks that like we're resting on the floor now i'm not a huge fan of those realistic clouds in a pixel art game so what i'm going to do is for the sky sphere a small tip here i'm going to make the colors determined by sun not based on the skylight that we have so we've got our light source uh, we also won't need the raycast nav mesh back to the sky sphere i'm going to set the brightness cloud speed and cloud opacity down to zero and the star brightness well, all of those won't be relevant which now gives us a clear sky i think that's now a little bit blinding a little bit bright it looks as though we're actually in heaven or something so what we want to do is i'm going to change the zenith color to a darker maybe a darker bluish gray i'm going to copy that because we'll reuse this hex value in a moment i'm going to change the horizon color to the same color and this just gives us a nice kind of flat sky sphere so if you've ever wanted the sky sphere to just be a very kind of minimal flat color i think that works a bit better it doesn't conflict with the outlines uh, so we can still clearly see the outlines that have been added to all of the assets but it's also not too bright it doesn't have the clouds it looks a little bit more fitting with the art style 
And just to test, we can see the camera can't see any more background over here. Uh, we're not seeing anything above us, and we're not going to see anything to the right hand side, hopefully. So that's all looking pretty good, and we're colliding with everything that we'd expect us to collide with. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.